What's going on YouTube? So I had this idea when I was at the gym of making these short little toy problem videos. Videos about questions that you get, uh, typical whiteboard questions. And I thought we'd start simple and move up to more difficult problems. But you may, well, you probably actually don't know, I've never told anyone this, but I used to be that weird kid in middle school that would go up to everyone and want to do magic tricks with them. Card tricks was my specialty. So the reason that I'm telling you this is because when you're in an interview and you're being whiteboarded, they're normally checking some sort of fundamental understanding of a concept in whatever language or framework that they're using, or they're checking what's known as a gotcha. And so the reason I have these cards is because it's going to make a little series called, what's the trick? So what we'll do is we'll shuffle the deck here. Okay. That looks, that looks good. And then we'll, we'll split it. And then I'm going to pop out the, the 10 of spades. Ten of spades. I'm not actually going to tell you how to do this trick, but I'll tell you the tricks to the problems that you need to know in the interview. All right, so let's talk about Fizzbuzz for a second. Also, if you like the magic trick, hit that little subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. Everyone's just going to come here for like card tricks now. But anyways, let's talk about Fizzbuzz. Typically, Fizzbuzz is a question that says, hey, write a program that goes up to a certain number and checks if that number is divisible by three or five, or those numbers can change. And if it's divisible by both, then you put Fizzbuzz. So divisible by three, fizz, divisible by five, buzz, if both fizz, buzz, right? So this checks a couple different, couple different like fundamentals of programming, and this is in JavaScript. So let's talk about the first one here. So how do you make a program that goes up to a certain number? Well, typically you would write a loop to do that. So we type four, i equals to zero, um, i is less than or equal to 100, i plus plus, okay? Then you have to put your brackets here because this is JavaScript and this is how you do it. So checks your understanding of your ability to write a loop. And then it checks your ability if you know if else statements pretty much. But not only the if else statement, you have to write a statement that checks both conditions first. Now, if you don't check both conditions first, you'll never reach you'll never reach um, you'll never reach it. So if you just do the first condition and the second condition, and then you check for both at the end as the last condition, it will never reach it. So that is the gotcha or the trick to this. Uh, another part of this, which we'll talk about in a second, let me type this out. All right, so this is your typical condition check here. We have if i percent sign three equals zero. All right, let's talk about percent sign. Percent sign is basically the same as divide. It just checks to see if you have a remainder. So if you do percent sign three, so i divided by three is equal to zero, that means you have a remainder of zero, which means it's evenly divisible, right? So five goes into 15 three times, right? Evenly divisible no remainder, then then you're good. So we check both conditions first. If i is divisible by three with no remainder and i is divisible by five with no remainder, console log fizz buzz. So then obviously you would just have your other conditions here. There. All right, so this is fizz buzz basically, but now we have to test it. So let's let's test it out real quick. Copy this, clear that, zoom that in so you can see it, paste that in there. So we should see a list. So we can see how many times something was printed all the way up to 100. Now if we want to print the number, we could also do that. We could do that. Just put plus i in there. You can concatenate that on is what that's known as. Copy this. Go to your inspector again, clear the console, paste that in. Now it'll give you the number that it's at rather than over overlapping, like that's what Chrome does to like minimize console space. So Fizzbuzz zero, three, right, all the way up. So that is essentially how you write Fizzbuzz. Their requirements might be different numbers or different words, but that is essentially checking modulus, ability to write loops, console log, if then statements, and to know to check multiple conditions before you check single conditions inside of JavaScript. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, go ahead and click that subscribe button again. We have a Discord. I would love to have you. I'll give you a personal welcome. We're kind of revamping things. If you join, you have the ability to tag yourself with whatever role you want. We've got web applications, mobile applications, game dev, UI, UX. So you can specify your specialty so that you can group up with other people. So I really want it to be this cool community. And I also had a Patreon. I've only had three people so far, but I haven't been it. <laughs> I haven't been able to sleep all weekend pretty much. 
uh, because I didn't think that anyone would do it. So shout out to every single one of my Patreons, all three of you. You guys are the best. You guys took my weekend sleep for me, and I want you to know that I appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope this has been helpful. Music